this. Where'd you go? <gasps> Here you are, say hi everybody. <laughs> hi everybody. Oh, T, these are so cool. I wish I'd known about these a couple of years back. So, when we had started doing homeschooling. Didn't know I was gonna really turn this into a homeschooling video today, but I thought since we were doing it and I had it out and you guys have asked and I know, I think a couple of you said in August you're gonna start doing it. Um, I thought maybe I would try to answer some questions. Guys, every morning she likes to watch a Disney movie. So this morning we're watching Beauty and the Beast and Aspen. He was up super early this morning. He woke up at like 4.30. So he laid down for a nap. It's like 7 now. He was so tired. Poor guy. She's got all her little people out right now. This is her morning tradition to pull all of her little people out in her books and spread them all over the floor. <laughs> Everywhere. And usually the Legos are out too, but I haven't unzipped them yet. What are you doing, Gray? Oh yeah? So my mom just got her this little pet shop yesterday. The little people, I think it's a pet shop. And she got her the tractor and the barn. We picked her up the school bus and the plane. And then Grandma Deb has been adding. Oh, excuse me. Oh. You don't say. You don't say. You just love your little people, huh? Yeah. You just love your little people. She also loves the telescope down there, you guys. She likes messing with it. What do you have? Graylin. Graylin. She's very busy playing right now, you guys. She has nothing to tell me. So look, I had to give her these little folders. They're like a, I don't know, like a plastic folder. But she's always wanting to get into the kids' homeschool stuff, so I gave her those and put them where she's always getting into. So she just pulled them out. So that's her, her own homeschool, huh? So this is all the school you need right now, huh? Lots of play. Lots of play. And she loves her books. This one. This one is her favorite. This little shapes book. This used to be Aspen's when he was little. So you can see it's had lots of love. But she loves this little tiny shape book. Oh, what are you talking about? Are you telling stories? All about your little people? Oh, where's Grandpa? Where's Grandpa? There he is. Oh, she's hiding. She's hiding. She's running away. Where are you going? Oh. She's hiding behind Grandpa's chair. Where are you going? Oh yeah, that's the other thing she got, but she has a hidden under there. <laughs> she got the little ice cream uh -oh. truck. Oh. Is Grandpa playing peekaboo? Where'd he go? Smiley girl, are you playing peekaboo? <gasps> there you are. Peekaboo. Where'd you go? <gasps> there you are. Say hi, everybody. <laughs> hi, everybody. You got Grandma's phone. You have Grandma's phone. You can't have Grandma's phone. Give me, give Grandma her phone. Give no. Oh, she's running. She's running. Give Grandma her phone. Give Grandma her phone. Ah. You can't have the phone. All right, I've got little Munchkin down for a nap behind me. I'm actually coming into the bathroom because I need to. I just got out of the shower. Matt was watching her while I took a shower, and I need to get some laundry done. So I think I'm actually going to do some folding right now. And uh, and then do do a load of laundry, put a load in. So <sighs> because I am so backlogged on laundry right now, it's not even funny. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Be a load of towels right now.
out and about. We're actually getting ready to drop off some some stuff to Goodwill, not the baskets. Those are my mom's. And Aspen and Ireland Hi. and Zane all came with. Graylin just went home, what'd she go home about? Not even quite an hour ago, huh? So anyway, and then, what else? We, oh, we're getting a charger because I've been having trouble editing videos because I need a charger, so. Can that is what we're out I'm doing. I'm not wearing my seatbelt. I can hear that. I just realized that. I'm like, why is it dinging him? I would have eventually told him because I would have been like, would you put your seatbelt on? I hate that dinging. Ding, ding, ding. So, Ireland and I just finished up most of her one-on-ones. We still have some reading work to do, but I just assigned her, and I know some of you have asked, so I guess this is gonna be the way that I'm gonna try to share this with you. So, one day a week we do electives, and I'll kind of talk about those in a video coming up on the next time that we do them. So we did those yesterday. We have one day a week that's all electives and we do something called nature notebook. So basically what our nature notebook is, is it has um, a summer, a winter, a spring, and a fall field note. Um, and so we'll go out and we'll do, one day a week we'll go out in nature and do things. Um, like find a quiet place outside away from distractions so that you can observe the season. And then the kids are going to, they'll write down all the things that they're observing about the season that they're in. So um, that is one part of our science curriculum. And we do that one day a week along with electives. So I'll kind of explain that in a future video for you guys about how we do electives. But what Ireland and I do is we start with either spelling practice. Um, so I still go to, um, a spelling worksheet website and I'll go downstairs and kind of tell you guys what that is once I get down there um, I don't have it with me up here But I'll go through and I'll give them pretests and then once they have a list of anywhere between four and six words that they're not as familiar with so it could be several pretests like Ireland took four pretests before we found enough words that she wasn't familiar with um, that she's been working on and practicing so I will give them a pretest, and then we work for four days on practicing them, and we do something called step spelling. So basically, you take the word and then you do a line um, for each letter. Let's say you were using the word call, you would put C A L L, and so when they would practice it, they would go C, and then on the next line C A, and then the next line C A L, and then C A L L, till they get all the letters in the word down. Um, so today what she was doing was actually taking her post test and if we don't have enough words correct then the, we'll move on and continue practicing them. So that's part of our spelling and then um, the other part of our spelling would be done through the good and the beautiful so they have their own spelling practice but I just prefer to add on a little bit more in-depth spelling practice for the kids because I think it also helps build their vocabulary and their reading that way especially if they're not familiar with a word. So. Today, Ireland is now doing some, we move into language arts, and she's doing the good and the beautiful for that, so she has some independent practice that she's going to work on, um, and she's doing first sentences for stories, so she's going to finish a sentence and then illustrate it when she's done, and that's her work. She had some additional practice, so like it comes with phonics cards and sight word ladders, um, so she did some phonics cards today, and she'll do sight, she just mastered all her sight word ladders, so she only has to practice them like one day a week every couple of weeks now that she has them down. And then I still do um, literature with Ireland through Easy Peasy. So right now she's working on more like phonics work. Um, and then we're also reading some readers with her. Um, and we've actually been doing the Madeline series um, because it introduces, there's actually quite a bit of really good vocabulary in here, if you didn't know that. Um, words that I didn't realize my kids wouldn't necessarily be familiar with, like um, embassy was a word that she wasn't very familiar with. So that's what we've been doing. And then she also has some readers through the good and the beautiful that she works through. So that's what we're going to do. We finished up her good and the beautiful work for language arts and then we're gonna move into her reading lesson and then she's gonna go ahead and take a break from there. So she does spelling. What else do we do, Rhea? I have a little list that I write up. So she does, um, this is just her one-on-one -on -one week. So we have uh, 
one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I only did five. We should have six. I think this week I only did five. So we have five um, lessons through Easy Peasy and then three of her book. So we'll do some one-on-ones with the book. Um, and then she does spelling. So I'm gonna check off day two on here. So I just have like a running sheet. And then we have language arts and handwriting. So we also do handwriting through the good and the beautiful. And that's what I was getting ready to do with her first is assign her her handwriting. So that'll be next. And the cool thing that I like about Easy Peasy is they're learning cursive, um, except for Aspen. He's in regular like printing and stuff. Um, they're learning cursive. They also work on their printing and then they have some art in there too, which is really nice. So that's what we're going to do is I'm going to assign her that. And then when we do group, she'll work on her independent work and then her handwriting. And she would normally work on spelling except for today. She won't do spelling um, because we had a test today for spelling. So, and then we'll go down and do that lesson. So that's a little bit of how I do Ireland's school day. All right. So I told you guys I would share with you because I know a lot of you have been asking about our homeschool but I told you I would come down and share with you one of the sites that I get spelling words from, and it's homespellingwords.com. Um, and I just have it bookmarked on third grade because that's when uh, one of the levels that I started using it at. Um, but yeah, it's one of my bookmark pages, but it goes all the way, all the way up to ninth grade spelling, and then it also has like theme spelling lists and different things like that. Super excited, because what came today? See? My markers. Yeah, she specially ordered these markers. Are we gonna use them right away? I bought them myself. And what kind Can of I markers are they? Up? Alcohol markers. Oh, they have a special carrying case and everything, don't they? What's in Ooh. the little packets? Maybe art stuff. What the? Oh, T, these are so cool. Are you excited? Yeah. Wait, look, they have. So this is 61 markers? Yep. Very cool. Why is that one clear? This is a blender. What? It's a blender. It's a blender. So these are the ones you've been wanting for a very long time, huh? Yeah. Are you actually putting that back in? Look at them, they're so pretty. <laughs> Wait, look! They're uh, a little selfish. Don't touch, please. Why are they warm? Because they were outside. I got a bullet nib. Oh. What's it called? A bullet nib and then a wide nib. Oh wait, let me see that. Hey, watch your head for a minute. Let me look. Well, you can get different. So that one's the wide nib? Yeah. What? And well, that's the other side oh, called the chisel oh. nib, but, and that's a bullet nib. T wanted to show you the color from her markers. So you said it's really flat. You want me to show you? Yeah, show me the difference. Okay. So Fresh. this is the alcohol markers, and she's gonna borrow one of Aspen's regular, like, Crayola washable markers. All right, let's see the difference. <laughs> oh, there's no like lines. Yeah. That's the difference. And they won't tear the paper when you layer. Oh, like when you do more on top yeah, of it? Yeah, because they're made out of alcohol. So it dries super yeah. fast. Not water. That's so cool. Dang, so the we need you guys. some of it those is super, school. This is smooth, it doesn't even feel like let me show you the show Does it shiny. bleed through? Yeah. Yeah, it does bleed through. It actually bleeds through more. Because uh of, just, of the alcohol. Yeah. But if you So get, this wouldn't be a good school marker for no. you guys. Because it would bleed through your book. Oh, I can feel the difference. Rub them at the same time. But for artwork, this is great. This will yeah. be great for your sketch pad. Oh, I can't move my finger across it. And you can get alcohol paper specifically made for those. That but is really cool. Use my sketchbook paper. There definitely is a huge difference. Look at that, you guys. Oh. Totally worth the cost, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I paid like 30 for these, um, but the most expensive alcohol marker out there goes for like 500 for the amount of markers I just got. Wow. So now for Aspen's day, I don't really write a list out for him because his is very simple. Um, it's very hard to forget. So I put him into the good and the beautiful as well. Um, and I actually put him in the very first level of the good and the beautiful um, because he needed some extra work on like letter sounds and stuff. And you guys, I'm so impressed. Within four, four lessons, he's recognizing letters and sounds of letters that he wasn't recognizing before um, that he really seemed to be struggling with he's catching on so this is there's a lot more like 
hands-on and game work in this, and that's right up his learning alley. So I also started him out in the very first handwriting book because it actually works on like their hand dexterity um, more than it does. It does letters in this book, like handwriting letters in here. And in here, it's like doodles and pre-writing, but it's perfect for a beginning writer because it works on like swoops and loops and different ways that letters would go. See, like creating stars and stuff like that. And then it also has the letters in there. So that's perfect. And then it'll t it talks to them. Like it'll say, um, trace the circle and color of the owls. How many owls do you see? optionally turn the four circles into sets of eyes. So, and he really likes that kind of stuff. It kind of challenges his brain a little bit. Um, so that's what we do for him. And then he also has some like math work as well. And I'll kind of go into that later because this is not the kid's math program. This is strictly their one-on-one. -on -one. So this is the stuff that they don't do together. <laughs> we had to treat the kids no! tonight. We decided to do tombstone pizzas and Sundays any way they wanted them. Good, huh? Mm -hmm. I still have to tell them what we do for our history and science shut. Everybody's been asking. So this is mine and Skylar's pizza. Like we're the only ones that really eat this. Once in a while, Aspen will, but we're big supreme lovers. So I told you guys that I would tell you the rest of what I'm using for curriculum. And I know that I've had some questions about how our curriculum works and stuff. Um, so if you have more questions, like I said, ask them down below and I will try to answer them the best that I can. Um, if you want like a, like a daily run through, I guess I could kind of, do, I, don't, I don't know, just kind of let me know. So anyway, um, one of the things that I have is I do this group schedule. So for, and you'll have to excuse me, I have dishes out there that need done. Anyway, one of the things I do is this group schedule. So I have Life of Fred, which is what we do math with, and I'll kind of show you guys that. So basically I have the kids' math. So Ireland and Zane do math together, Aspen joins us, but he has his own mathematics that we're working on because it's very basic at the moment um, for him. And then Tierlin and Braxton do math together and I'll explain that in a little bit because that's very different than what we were doing because they also do science together. So with this new program we're doing and I love it and they seem to really be loving it. Actually all the kids seem to love what we're doing. So, and they learn so much in just a short period of time which is really cool. Um, and then I have history that I do um, and that's a group thing, except for T. She does her own history. Um, Braxton, I did switch to this. T didn't want to switch because she is going into her last year of high school. So she's already done so much. She just wants to finish up what she's working on. And that really makes a lot of sense. Braxton was, he was fine with switching. He really didn't care either way. Um, the only thing I have to do is do US government with him yet um, that he'll need to do. So, and I'll probably just have him fulfill that course the way that Tierland did. Um, anyway, I do history all together with um, Braxton, Zane, Ireland, and Aspen a little bit. He sits in as much as he can handle sitting in at the age he's at. And I'll explain that in a little bit, how I do that with all of them. And then science, so we do history two days a week for everybody but Tierlin. Tierlin has history every day. Um, and then we do science two days a week. Um, because that's how the courses are designed to be able to cover them in a year's time, but you only need to do them two days a week, which is really cool. Um, and we do science two days a week with Ireland, Zane, and Aspen, but then Tierland and Braxton do science every single day. Um, and then we do our history reading. We do that four days a week. And then we do whatever literature read we're doing, which we're actually finishing up um, a book that we were working on. And I'll kind of touch on that in a minute. And then we have what I call our Friday schedule, or it's really our flex day. So like we were gonna be really busy on Monday, so it's a shorter day um, that we do. We don't have history and we don't have science necessarily, but we have like all of our electives, like computer class, logic class, health, um, any additional art we might do. 
but we get a lot of our art now through the good and the beautiful. But if there's anything additional I want to add, I still kind of look to see what Easy Peasy is offering for that week. Um, and if it's something I want to add into their curriculum, I do. And then we have music and of course our nature notebook. So those classes just don't take as long. Um, and that's usually our Friday schedule, so that's why that's there, but it's all checked off this week because we did it at the beginning of the week. I know that's a lot in like one sitting, so I'll, I'll try to break it down just a little bit for you, how it works and like what kids are doing what. So I kind of brought everything up with me. And for Tierlin and Braxton, they are doing math and science out of this book. So they'll actually finish this before a year and then they'll move into the next one. So if it seems like the math is a little bit different, um, it's, it's kind of hard to explain how this program works, but they'll get everything they need before, Braxton will probably be done with most of his mathematics um, before he's even in his senior year doing this program. So it's really cool. Um, so they have Life of Fred is what we're working out of. And this is pre-algebra zero with physics. Um, and this is so cool the way it puts everything together. So that's what Braxton and T do. I love it. They're super short lessons. Well, it really depends on how we're delving into it. Like if they're not understanding and we have to go back and work on it a little bit more, whatever we need to go in depth with, we're able to stop and do that. But the lessons still aren't super long, which is awesome. And I think there's 36, it's designed to go over 36 weeks. So, um, but we tend to get in a lesson just about every day. Then Ireland and Zane for mathematics are doing, so when you start kids on Life of Fred, if they're not already at a certain like level in their mathematics, you start them at the very beginning in the apples book. So they're both in apples and they are absolutely loving it. And the cool thing is, is this has some stuff in here. It touches on a lot of things besides just mathematics. It touches on language, art, science, logic. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff in these books that I really wish I had known about these. I had heard of them, but I didn't really know what they were. I wish I had known about these a couple of years back. So when we had started doing homeschooling, but you live and you learn, right? So anyway, that's what we're doing for Ireland and Zane and Aspen sits in. And so what I do with him, because you have to, the kids have to have like a basic addition and subtraction um, background before they can really get into the life of Fred books. So what I do with him is like, if I'm, I'm touching on something and I know like maybe I can teach him what the equal sign is, that's what he'll do. So what he's doing is he's doing this math readiness. This is the first one. I picked him up a bunch of these workbooks um, and I kind of put him in the order that I thought he should go with them. And so he's working through this math readiness and this is his first one. And I think I have six others plus there's gonna be one like bigger one that he'll work on before we move into Life of Fred. Because once he gets through these, he should be just about ready for Life of Fred. Um, but yeah. So math readiness, that's what he does every day, most every day. We're just starting to really get into like math concepts right now. It really depends on where his attention span is at his age. Okay, that being said, let's go into, let's just dive into science. So Tierlin and Braxton get their science. So they're both in physics right now. They get their science through Life of Fred. So they don't have to do anything with that. They get their math and science all in one. But Life of Fred does not have science for the younger kids. So what I did was I purchased um, the good and the beautiful because the good and the beautiful is good up through eighth grade when it comes to their science programs. So I will use these with Aspen as well as Ireland and Zane. So Aspen sits in with us when, when he's in the right frame of mind, but I technically, in the state of Iowa, I don't even need to teach him science right now, but I do. I want him to experience it if he can. And he learns science in lots of other ways, like our nature notebook, stuff like that. When we do experiments, he likes to be part of that. He's very curious. So a lot of the like really reading, reading stuff, um, I don't make him sit through. We've tried it and he really wanted to. 
and then it, it was just really hard for his age, I think, and for where his attention span is. So if it's something he's really into, I encourage him to jump in. And if it's something that he's like, no, because I really don't want him to hate what he's learning. I want him to learn to love learning. So anyway, that being said, so this is for Ireland and Zane and Aspen if he wants to join us, but we're studying marine biology right now. So I bought these little tabs that are on the top to kind of help me. And it has 13 lessons in here, but I look at them more like, might be, it's 13, it says lessons, but they're more like a unit. There's a lot of information in them. So we'll break these apart and really explore these in depth. Um, and it's so cool, you guys, I gotta show you. Look at this. So it has like a breakdown of everything you need. I don't know if you can see that. And then there's like optional read alouds, which I did purchase the read alouds. Um, and you don't purchase those through the good and the beautiful. Um, I actually purchased them. It gave me a list of like suggested read alouds and I actually went to thrift books and purchased all of my read alouds. Um, two of them I think I had to purchase new, but I was able to get a discount buying them through thrift books. So if you decide to do something like that, that's a tip. Check thrift books. You guys know I love them. Anyway, um, so this is what we're doing is the good and the beautiful. It's open and go. It's really awesome. Um, and it even gives you stuff like this. Look at this. It's so beautiful. There's a reason it's called the good and the beautiful. You guys look at that. So this is like a mini book. So all of these, now you could get this marine biology unit for free, but it doesn't come in the full color. Like you can, you can download it and print it in the full color, but it was actually cheaper for me to just buy it than to try to print the full color myself. It was like $27.99, I think, for the whole thing, which would be cheaper than me trying to print it. And they come on such nice quality paper too. So it's not like it's on just, it's not on just like computer printed paper. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, anyway, so I put that in the front of the binder. So I went out and bought the binder, just a little white one inch binder. Um, and I went with the white one because it'll be easy for me to see and I'm thinking I might mark on the side like what unit this is because the next one we're doing is a unit on space. So there's a bunch of different ones and they have some new ones that'll be coming out. This is not, this is not um, sponsored, you guys. I'm just, I'm really enjoying doing the good and the beautiful with my kids. As you can tell, I was huge into Easy Peasy and I still love a lot of their things. But in the season of our life that we're in, having something a little more open and go that doesn't require as much planning on my part was super important for me. Um, and I still do planning, but it's, it's so much easier and so much faster for me now because a lot of it's already prepared out, especially when it comes to science and history. That was a big one for me um, and the mathematics. But now I'm able to add to it and say, oh, you know what? I want to add this to it and enrich it a little bit more. So. Anyway, I'm kind of off on a tangent, but that is part of the reason I switched to something where it did cost me, but it wasn't, it wasn't ultra expensive for me to buy this. Now, purchasing the books to go along with the marine biology, which you don't have to have, and you could utilize your local library and put together your own uh, books because it kind of, it tells you like what each unit is. So for in this one, the very first unit is ocean characteristics. So you could pick a book that went with that out of your local library. So that would be a way to save money. Um, our library is currently, I think still not open and you cannot get <laughs> a library card through them, um, until they're open. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, if you had one before, then you could, I think you could renew it or reestablish it, I think they said, but you can't open a new one at this point. So anyway, so that's how we're doing our science unit. And then I had this book in our resources, What Makes an Ocean Wave? So this is all Q and A. So every day we do one or two questions and I let the kids guess their answers and then we find out what the answer is. So that's just an added thing, even on the days we don't have science that I thought would be fun. This was out of our personal library. And then our first unit starts with, so this is one of our suggested reads, is I wonder why the sea is salty and other questions about the ocean. And so this is another one that asks lots or answers lots of questions. So that's what we'll do is before we even start the unit, our first day doing science in this, um, 
will read the read aloud first in one or two sessions. Probably one for this one, I'm thinking. Anyway, um, that's what we'll do is we'll start with the read aloud and then we'll delve into that particular unit. So that is science for them, um, for Ireland, Zane, and Aspen. And then for history, so Tierlin does history through Easy Peasy. She still does that. Um, and then Braxton, Zane, Aspen, and Ireland. Aspen as much as as much as he'll he'll actually do this year. We'll see. Um, one of the things I did today so that he could sit with us when he started getting bored is we're talking about ancient Egypt. Now we've talked about ancient Egypt before, but the way that history year one on here and the way history through the good and the beautiful, so that's who we're going through. The way history through the good and the beautiful goes is it goes like ancient and then it'll go to another step in history and then another and then into modern day each year. So there were a lot of things in here when I first thought about it, I was like, well, we'll just skip over ancient Egypt because we've already studied it. But as I looked through, there was a lot more information, like it was in depth and it goes from creation all the way through to, I think, let's see, where's the last, um, the fall of communism. So that's where it ends up at the end of the history course book. So I decided I didn't want them to miss out on it, and we'll just go ahead and start where the books start. It doesn't hurt them to refresh a little bit, um, and it does something really cool, like it has them memorize quotes from famous people. So I have them each, they're supposed to do two quotes. I have them each doing two quotes, smaller if they're younger, and then a larger quote if they're older. So um, I think Braxton's doing Giving Me Liberty, or give me death, um, and America the Beautiful, Zane's doing the American's Creed, and what else is he doing? Let's see. Uh, a quote by John Adams, and then Ireland's doing a quote by Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, and then Aspen's doing George Washington and George Washington, because those were the smallest ones, so. Um, and it's really cute, because he's already memorized the first line of all I am I owe to my mother and I thought that was really cute that he's gotten it and he knows it's George Washington well he knows Washington I'll say George and he says Washington so by the end of the school year he should have this down pat pretty good so he's had fun doing that with us anyway I'm still off course again so this is our history course book year one and the way this works and why you can do this family style is because it has lesson books that come along with it that they're PDFs, you print those off. Um, and you do it by, it goes kindergarten? Kindergarten through third or first through third? One of the two, I think it's first through third. First through third, fourth through sixth, seventh through ninth, and then 10th through 12th. Um, so Braxton's on the 10th through 12th. And then Ireland and Zane are on four to six. And then of course, uh, Aspen's on first through third. So it's, and it, it's done like, a lot of the coursework is the same, but it's in more in depth. Uh, like Braxton has a lot of projects that he has to do for this. So that's how they're able to study all the same thing. They're studying the same point in history, but it just depends on how in depth they're studying it. And it also comes with, the big book of history stories because I bought the whole course. You can buy these items separately, but I bought the whole course um, because I just, I really liked what it came with. Um, and so this is like small stories on historical figures, like a day in Thebes, they'll read the story of Joseph. Um, and then it comes with, and the kids are really looking forward to trying this game out. It comes with the keys of history, year one. Um, and so they'll get to play that. I think this next lesson they get to play it. And then I bought the reader pack that comes from The Good and the Beautiful. Now we've already read The Cat of Bubastes, but I like to have a read to go along with the point in history. And it came with this, the reader pack has four books. So there's basically like four chunks of units that you'll go through. And this one was Boy of the Pyramids. A Mystery of Ancient Egypt. So that's what we're currently reading. And we read this four days a week. 
And then the other book it came with was Through the Wall and The Three Gold Doubloons and The Saracen Steed. So that's what we're doing for history and then this is what we're doing for literature right now. Now this is not, so Tierlin and Braxton both do literature through Georgia Virtual. Ireland and Zane do literature through Easy Peasy <laughs> because I really like their literature program which is completely separate from language arts. Um, I like her suggested books through there. They're really great classic novels um, that are like living books. And for Aspen, I have been going off the Ambleside Online suggested book list, which is um, along the Charlotte Mason uh, books. And I've been going off of that book list for him to read him stories at night. So right now we're currently reading James Harriet's Treasury of uh, children's stories I think is what it's called. We're in the middle of reading that. We had just finished Peter Rabbit um, and then we'll go through and I'll purchase a couple of books off that. So I do his literature at night for his bedtime stories. Um, but we are currently finishing up our history read from Easy Peasy because the kids absolutely loved this book. So if you're looking for a good read to teach your kids about Vikings and this is all about like these are true stories of the Vikings. Um, this is definitely a great read. This is The Viking Tale. So we'll probably continue to go off of some of her history book list um, and read those as part of our literature along with some of the other things we picked. I think the next thing is we're going to finish up reading Around the World in 80 Days after we finish this and then we're going to read about Michelangelo um, and things like that. Now we were doing our children's Bible that we were reading to do our Bible studies but we get all of that through the good and the beautiful now which is really nice that's already added in with like history and it's added in in our language arts also in part of their handwriting so they're getting a lot of that biblical history and learning that I wanted them to have that way um, Braxton does do Spanish and Tierlin will do Spanish through easy peasy um, because it's free through there and I've looked into a lot of language programs and that was the most cost effective and and they even get a little bit of a Latin background in it so that's kind of cool. Um, Tierlin still has electives that she's doing. Uh, Tierlin and Braxton both do um, some of their electives through Khan Academy as well as Easy Peasy. So if you want more in depth on like maybe a breakdown of my high schoolers and how I do that because theirs is very, very eclectic. eclectic. It's suited towards each child's needs. So, and what they're really into, what they're looking to go into for college. But I know you guys have had some questions. I've been asked quite a few times, like how we do our homeschool, what we're doing, because I know there's a few of you that have decided to homeschool or are having to COVID school during this upcoming time. I know there's some schools in Iowa that have chosen not to go back um, in the fall when originally they were thinking they were going to. I think Cedar Rapids, Iowa now offers an online program to any, um, you can be in any district in Iowa and they've developed an online school that way. So that's kind of cool. I think that's awesome that they're doing that and giving that option to parents. So, all right guys, that's the end of everything I had to say. I didn't know I was gonna really turn this into a homeschooling video today, but I thought since we were doing it and I had it out and you guys have asked and I know, I think a couple of you said in August you're gonna start doing it. Um, I thought maybe I would try to answer some questions and I'll try to answer them in the comments below. So go ahead and leave a comment and, with your questions if you have any, have any, and we'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.